so um before i start i just want to give a, the biggest apology ever for not uploading it in a while uh some other personal things that happened in my personal life that um girl just it's it's been rough it's been rough is all i really can say but um i do apologize for not uploading in a hot minute i've just been absent bro absent but I'm back for now. Um, can't guarantee I'll be here forever, like for too long. I'm gonna probably be in and out once in a while, but I will try and keep these videos posted because I know a lot of people are waiting for them, especially some people are waiting for some other fan fictions that I've gotten comments on already. Um, I will try to have them out for you guys, I promise. Um, anywho. Let's get into the story. So we how it does. Okay, we are currently reading the Xeno Hero BHMA X Xenomorph Male Listener up in here. Um we are currently in chapter seven, but we got to go back a chapter for the purpose of thy recap. Basically in this recap start line, chapter six, um we are ta we are literally we're taking um the BHMA exam, which is all the robots shooting them, killing them, and you're like in a simulation, pretty much. We have to destroy we're robots. So that that's what's basically going on here. Um, and long story short, um, Izuku and moi have they've been trying to go around trying to fight people. Da -da -da -da. It's been quite a failure. They couldn't find any robots, and then when they found them, they were already taken down by some other people, so <laughs> it wasn't really that well, going that well for them. So practically at the very end, same thing that goes on in the anime, where basically Izuku saves Raka while um, we do something else that is important, probably just making sure they're, they're alive and recovering, or moving something to make sure she lives. Just being a helper, pretty much. And... We ended up destroying the um, the biggest, but literal zero pointer robot, which is insane. I was like, "What?" But Azuka get, ended up getting her in the process. We ended up meeting. I cannot remember her name. Hold up, I'm gonna pull it up for you guys. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Her name. Her name is gonna pop up here in a minute. <laughs> her name is gonna pop up here in a minute here we go recovery girl okay thank you so basically we ended up meeting recovery girl first we didn't trust her while we were holding izuku um you know he's obviously like has a broken arm da -da -da -da, right because using the all, all might power right so she ended up giving us his gummies we ended up eating them accepting it she ends up helping izuku and we get to meet recovery girl um, then after that, the funny thing is we ended up killing like two other, like I think three other people, which ended us, um, at the very end, turning us into literal human, pretty much like this. And then, um, we ended up, obviously we ended up finding, Inko ended up finding out, um, Azuku a week later was depressed because, obviously, like, he thinks, like, he can't, ain't gonna go in. Because he didn't get any points, as far as he could see. But he ended up getting in um, after he received the letter. Da -da -da -da, and <laughs> they were super excited. And that they allowed um, moi, us, to go with him. Which is super, luber exciting. And I'm like, that is on period. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it went, guys. <laughs> Now we is officially in chapter 7, but before we get fully into it, let's get a hear of the warnings. For the warnings getting into this chapter, these chapters, there will be mentions of violence, murder, fighting, threats, trauma, bullying, and mainly the trauma of, involves um, other aliens, the Aucha, 
So, just letting y'all know. <laughs> if I've been here since the beginning, y'all know. The ones who know, know. Um, but those are um, all the Zai warnings I have for you guys. Um, remember, this is BHMA slash there is a xenomorph involved in this. So, um, prepare yourselves. That's all I gotta say. It's not terrible, promise, but y'all should prepare yourselves anyway. This is there's a xenomorph involved. <laughs> Anywho, um, let's get into the story. Chapter seven. What I can do for now. Wine POV. The night after Izuku opened his acceptance letter, that person contacted him, and there was no way I was gonna let him go greet him alone at night. Izuku, oh my we are, we seem to have surprised him as blood began to shoot out of his mouth. Oh my, who's that? There were two bystanders not too far away that seemed to hear Izuku scream. Random, no way, where? Oh my, repeat after me. I had the wrong person. <laughs> my king began to flare his arms around repeating what All Might said as I copied his gestures. <laughs> Izuku, oh, I had the wrong person. The two humans let out a disappointed, disappointed comments as All Might and Izuku let out sighs of relief. Then All Might looked past Izuku to me before freezing, thinking another human knows his secret identity. All Might, young Midoriya, I said not to tell people about my secret identity. Izuku, what? But I, oh, don't worry. All Might, that's just YN. He just transformed into a human about a week ago. This seemed to settle his nerves as he sighed in relief once more, before tossing a granola bar into the air. It was pretty high up, so I slightly jumped to catch the snack on the way down. Oh my, another great catch. Anyway, congrats on getting accepted. Izuku, thank you very much. They both have fived as All Might tossed me another snack, seeing as I, already done, I was already done with the first one. Oh my, just so you know, I didn't tell the school about my connection to you. You're the type that would think that's cheating, right? I wasn't one of the judges. Izuku, thank you for your concern, but I was surprised to find out that wine can come with me and that you're a teacher at UA, so that's why you came here, huh? I mean, your agency is in... I don't even know how to say that. And I don't even know how to say that. Tokyo at... I was going to stop his rambling, but All Might beat me to it. All Might, stop that! He then turned around to watch the water as I laid next to Izuku, getting sand on on and in my pants. <laughs> oh my, I couldn't tell anyone before the school announced it. I just happened to be offered a job from UA when I was searching for a successor. My king looked down at his hands, deep in thought, as I stood on standby to help him if he gets emotional. Izuku, my body broke with one kick and one punch of one for all. I can't control it at all. Oh my, that can't be helped. It's like if you asked a person who suddenly grew a tail to do a trick, they wouldn't be able to even control it. My siblings and I were able to transform our bodies into wheels the moment we were born. I wonder if I can do it still. While they were still speaking, I stuck my tail in my mouth and bit down. Not hard enough to hurt, just enough to hold on tight. With my tail secure, I tucked in my arms and legs as I leaned forward, causing me to roll. Azuka and All Might stopped talking to watch me speed around the beach as a makeshift wheel. This brings back so many memories. I wasn't the fastest out of my siblings. The fastest was Maurice, but he was a fast runner, so of course he would be the fastest. Although the strongest has always been me. I was even surprisingly stronger than our mother. I rolled up a slanted rock allowing me to fly high in the air while falling i released my tail and untucked my arms and legs allowing me to land safely next to izuku i bowed as all my and izuku applauded my performance <laughs> izuku that was really cool by end all my very impressive here he tossed an oddly shaped snack in the form of a cat face not wanting that adorable and delicious smelling treat to hit the ground i caught it with my tongue they once again applauded as I ate the treat. It surprisingly tasted delicious, perhaps better than all of the other snacks I was given. All oh Might, amazing catch. Izuku, hey All oh Might, what was that treat you tossed him? 
Oh my, that was a cat treat. It was surprisingly cheap for a huge bag. Anyway, what, what was I saying? Oh, right now, you're either at 100% or zero. He picked up two cans off the ground as he continued to speak to Izuku. All oh might, but once you can control it, you'll be able to adjust what, what, to what your body can handle. Izuku, control? All oh might, the more you train a vessel, the more you'll be able to move the power freely. When he went into buff form instantly, as he crushed two cans in his hands. All might, like this. Random. Wait, is that All Might? Random two. No way. When did he get here? All Might. Let's go, young Midoriya. You too, YN. Izuku. Yes, sir. YN. We began to run with All Might, with All Might leading Izuku in the middle with me at his side. Why are we running? A, where are we running to anyway? Do I really care? Nope. As long as I'm right by Izuku's side all the way. It was currently April. I was sitting. Ne- <laughs> it was currently April. I was sitting next to the door, waiting as Izuku was tying his bright, brightly red shoes. Bright red shoes. Izuku attempted to place me inside the same constricting clothing he was he is wearing, but he was unsuccessful. Normally, I would abide by Izuku's orders, but those clothes greatly reduced my movement. He just settled for letting me wear my pants and a baggy sweater with the UA logo stitched onto both. Inko, Izuku, do you have a tissue? Izuku, yeah. Inko, and your handkerchief? What about your handkerchief? Your hanky? Izuku, I have it. I'm going to be late. I have to hurry. No, you won't. No, you won't. I'll get us there in record time. The only way you'll be late is if you walk, if is if you want to walk there. Izuku got up and grabbed my leash while placing his backpack on his shoulders. Inko, Izuku! Izuku, what is it? She raised her head, showing her eyes filled with admiration and small tears with a smile. Inko, you're really cool. My king gave his mother a smile before opening the door. Izuku, I'm off. Inko, hold on. I forgot to give this to you. Here, it's a bag of small treats to keep Ryan calm throughout the day. Hopefully, he won't cause too much trouble for anyone. I will melt the entire building by the end of the day. (laughs) Period. I ran through the building with Izuku hanging onto my back with my tail acting as a seatbelt. From what my king said, there will be 18 other humans in our class. I just hope that they'll be kind to Izuku. If not, I'm going to melt more bodies. Izuku also said, don't attack anybody unless they attack first. Izuku, class 1A, class 1A. This place is too big. I hissed and gestured to a giant door with 1A on it. I stopped outside the door, placing Izuku down as he grabbed my leash. Izuku, this door is huge! Is it for accessibility? Wyan, I believe it is, unless they need to make the door huge to write 1A on it. I wonder if my mother could fit through there. Izuku, really, how tall is your mom? Wyan, 4.5 meters, I believe. Izuku, what? Wyan, don't look so so shocked. I was taller from her by than her by a meter or two and stronger but i can tell you about my family later on now focus izuku you're right the elite the elite chosen from the huge number of exam at the exam i could sense his heart rate spike for a second from all my years of killing various creatures i know this is from this is from fear so to calm him down i rubbed his shoulders purring he seemed to relax, so I spoke encouraging words to him. When you got this. You're powerful. And if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. Izuku, what? I got off him and went back to his side, ready to enter the room. When that is what a human said on, t- on the TV. He made his way to open the door, opening it while speaking. I activated the invisibility quirk I gained from the human. My body and clothes were now completely invisible, allowing me to survey the humans with an un- with, with, <laughs> unseen. Izuku, all right. Well, I hope we're not in the same class as the scary people. Don't put your feet on the desk. Katsuki, huh? He was cut off by the blue-haired man and the explosion, explosion human arguing. I surveyed our new classroom, inspecting the other humans. I say half of these humans have the potential to kill me, but the other half won't even be able to touch me. Don't you 
don't you think that's rude to the UA upperclassmen and the people who made the desk? Katsuki, nope. What junior high did you go to? You side character? Tenya, I attended Samori Private Academy. My name is Tenya Ida. He did a strange gesture with his hand while saying that which confused me. You know the robot hand, guys? Yeah. Katsuki, Some. So you're a damn elite, huh? Looks like I'll have fun. The <laughs> oh my goodness. Looks like I'll have fun crushing you. The blue one seemed taken aback by the explosion human's threat. Has no one threatened him with death before? Tenya, crushing? That's cruel. Do you truly aim to be a hero? The explosion human looked away in our direction, making the blue-haired human look as well. Tenya, you're... This caused all the humans to look in our direction. With all of their attention directed to us, Izuku got flustered. Izuku, um... Tenya, good morning! He began to walk towards us, but the way he walked towards us looked like he might attack. His fists were clenched, and he kept making direct eye contact. Not wanting to reveal my position, yet I remained hidden while silencing my hiss and growls. Tenya, I, I am from Samoe Sum Private Academy. My name is Zuku. I heard. I'm Midoriya. Nice to meet you, Ida. Tenya, Midoriya, you realized that there was something more to that practical exam, didn't you? I had no idea. I misjudged you. I had to admit it, but you are better than me. <laughs> At least admits it. He began to silently get closer to which finally caused me to reveal myself. Wyan. My hiss made him freeze as well as the rest of the humans. I slowly stood up, deactivating my invisibility. As the effects of the quirk deactivated, it slowly revealed my entire seven-foot body. He was getting way too close for my liking, so I brandished him with my, my tail at him. Izuku, Wyan. It's alright, nobody's going to hurt me. Except maybe Kachan. I slowly sat back at his side as he tossed me one of his cat treats his mother gave him. I swiftly ate it as he began to rub my hair to calm me down. Izuku, I'm sorry about that. Wine is just really protective of me. Tanya, but why is... I heard a familiar voice behind us when I turned around as I saw the kind human. Oh, that curly hair. You're the plain looking one, but where's your pet? I really wanted to meet them again. I hissed, which got her attention, but when she saw me, she had a different response than last time. Hey, why do you have another human on a, le a student on a leash? And why isn't he wearing the uniform? Tanya, that happens to be my same question, Midoriya. Why do you have, have a fellow classmate on a leash? And you? He then pointed at me, which caused me to get slightly annoyed. Tanya, why aren't you in proper attire? Have you no respect or care for UA rules? Not really, no. Is it what? This is YN, my pet. He somehow just gained a quirk and that made him partially human. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you again, YN. She began. <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> she began to rub my head, which caused me to purr. Tanya, I see. Apologies for the, mi for the misunderstanding. It's a pleasure to meet you, YN. He reached his hand out to me while the kind human and the Zuku began to talk to each other. Right before he could get any closer, I hissed at him, which caused him to back up. You have yet to give me a treat, yet you wish to touch me? Keep reasonable. The kind human must have said something to fluster Izuku as his face was as red as blood of his, as the blood of his enemies. The kind human began to initiate smashing something while saying, break. I turned to my left to see the explosion human glaring at Deku. <laughs> I can't help it. Izuku. While he noticed me, his glare only faltered slightly before becoming more intense. I just smirked at him, remembering when he attempted to assault Izuku in a secluded area of that of their old school. Flashback. Ay ay ay. YN POV. Izuku told me to wait outside for him as one of the teachers needed to speak with him and the explosion human. While I was service surveying the school, the school grounds, I saw Zuku be dragged along by the explosion maker. He'll never learn. He'll never learn, will he? No matter what I do, he keeps targeting my king for what reason I have yet to understand. I followed after them undetected, wanting to see what this altercation was for, was for this time. It seems that Azuku unintentionally ruined his plan for his future. Hearing enough, I slithered my way behind him, 
before looming over them. He saw my huge shadow, but before he could turn, I wrapped my tail around his neck, hoisting him in the air. I learned he hates to be called Kachan, and that other that humans die quick when cut off from a steady supply of oxygen. So I have to make this quick. Why now, now, Kachan? We wouldn't want you to die so young, especially before you can attend UA. So do us both a favor and leave. It's what you humans call a win-win, no? You keep your life, and I won't have to dissolve another body. Seeing he was about to pass up out, I dropped him as he gasped for air. Once he was okay, he glared at me and Izuku before walking away. When he left, Izuku began to lecture me about almost killing him. Now, if this was me, if I was caught, I would have left him the hell alone. Like, keep my distance forever. Like, I don't know what this man thinks. Like, he's going to defeat a literal xenomorph. I don't know. That's his, that's his delusions speaking to him because... <laughs> No, ma'am. <laughs> Anyways, um, flashback end. He'll never learn, but I'm glad he won't. It keeps things interesting. I could smell another human approaching, but its ascent was strangely from similar to a cat's. I looked back up to Izuku just to see him covering his face, which was tinted a more intense red. I wonder if today was just the entrance ceremony or an orientation. Orientation. I wonder what our teachers like. Izuku's so close. Anyways, the, the set of cats was now at the door which caught, which caught my attention. There was a human inside of a yellow shell. He looks very tired. Aren't you nervous? Go somewhere else if you want to play at being friends. But, being, but having allies are essential, especially during war times. They seem to have noticed now that the human, about the human in the yellow shell. This is the hero course. He then took out a strange pouch that smelled of something nice. I slowly made my way over to him as I wanted some of that snack. Who are you and why aren't you wearing a proper uniform? Azuka explained to him that I acquired a quirk that made me human. While they were talking, I sniffed around the yellow shell smelling more treats. I was about to cut open the shell when the human looking inside took another patch pouch out. I'll give this to you if you leave my sleeping bag alone. Wanting the, the snack, I nodded as he handed it to me. Not knowing how to eat it, I just threw the entire thing into my mouth, which caused a human's eyes to, wi <laughs> to widen slightly before going back to not caring. The taste wasn't that bad. It was fruity and mushy. Satisfied, I went back to Izuku's side as a human got up and shed its yellow shell. <laughs> okay, it took eight seconds before you were quiet. Time is limited. You kids are not or not rational enough. All the humans' attention was now on the sad and tired-looking human, Aizawa. I'm your homeroom teacher. Shota Aizawa. <laughs> Shota Aizawa. Oh, I said it so wrong. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Shota Aizawa. Nice to meet you. He looks physically weak, but I know better than to judge my potential opponents before I see them in battle. He then reached into his yellow shell and took out blue clothes. Aizawa, it's kind of sudden, but put this on and go onto the field. Do I have to wear that too? All oh, a quirk assessment test? The human synchronized, yelling slightly. The, but the yelling slightly hurt my ears, but the pain quickly went away. What about the entrance ceremony? The orientation? Aizawa, if you're going to become a hero, you don't have time for such leisurely events. UA's selling point is how unrestricted its school traditions are. That's also how the teachers run their classes. You kids have been doing these since junior high, too, right? He then pulled out a phone that contained words I couldn't that contained words I couldn't read. Aizawa, physical fitness tests were 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 you were you weren't <laughs> my English fit, physical fitness tests where you weren't allowed to use your quirks. The country still uses averages taken for the results from students not using their quirks. It's not rational. Well, the Ministry of Education is procrastinating. Bakugo, you finished at the top of the practical exam, right? In junior high, what was your best result for the softball throw? Katsuki, 67, yeah, 67 meters. I remember that. I was on the roof of the school cheering Izuku on. He didn't do so good, but he said my cheering helped. So that made me feel nice. Aizawa. Then, try to do it with your quirk. 
The explosion human moved to and moved into a nearby circle as Aizawa handed him the ball. Aizawa, you can do whatever you want as long as you stay in the circle. Hurry up. Give it all you got. Katsuki, well then. He prepared to throw as he stretched his arms before rearing his, his hand to activating his quirk. Katsuki, y'all know what he says? Die. <laughs> I Izuku, die. Was the object alive? Well, if it was before, it sure is it now. Aizawa, know your own maximum first. The, that is the most rational way to form the foundation of a hero. <laughs> he showed the screen results that showed 705.2 meters. The other humans began to speak of how fun this is. 750 meters? Seriously? What's this? It looks fun. That human smells strangely of acid, but humans... But don't humans die when they come in contact with it? I will have to inspect this further. We can use our quirks as much as we want, as expected of the hero course. I have no idea why, but I feel like what he said angered Aizawa. Aizawa, it looks fun, huh? You have three years to become a hero. Will you have an attitude like that the whole time? He had an evil smirk on his face. Aizawa, all right. Whoever comes in last place... And all eight tests will be judged to have no potential and will be punished by expulsion. Uh-huh. Everyone began to radiate fear, but most of them but most of it came from Izuku. He looked at his hand as he began to shake, wanting to comfort him. I wrapped my tail around him as I hugged him and began to purr. Wyan, do not fear, Izuku. I'm technically a student here, so if I fail all tests, you'll be safe from termination. <laughs> Bro, really said, I could be the worst. Don't worry, so you don't have to be. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't know if that would make me feel better or just make me feel worse. <laughs> Izuku, but he was cut off by the teacher speaking once more. Aizawa, we're free to do what we want about the circumstances of our students. He then moved the hair out of his eyes, revealing a smile. Aizawa, welcome to the UA's hero course. Last place will be expelled, but it's the first day of school. No one, no one, even if it wasn't the first day of school, this is too unfair. Unfair? I just witnessed my entire family be slaughtered in minutes, while my mother was captured and taken to the Yauch's mothership. All the while, I just watched, too terrified to save her until it was too late. That is unfair, but life still continues on with or without you. Aizawa, natural disasters, big accidents, and selfish villains. I don't even know how to say that word. Whose time or place can't be predicted. Japan is covered in unfairness. Heroes are the ones who reverse those situations. If you wanted to go to talk to with, with your friends at Mikey D's after school, too bad. For the next three years, UA will... UA will do it all it can to give you one hardship after the after another. Go beyond plus ultra. Overcome it with all you got. Everyone looked determined to overcome these trials as I suddenly took one of the snacks from Azuku's pockets. <laughs> He's just grabbing snacks and just chewing on them, bro. I <laughs> saw all right. Demonstration's over. The real thing the real thing starts now. Test one fifty meter dash. The first test was on speed. The blue-haired human and the frog human were competing first. Robot, on your mark, get set. With that sound, the human sprinted down to the other side. The blue-haired human crossed in 3.04 seconds, while the frog human crossed in 5.58 seconds. The blue-haired one might be a problem if we were able if we were to have a battle of speed. I believe I can go up to 60 miles per hour if I really wanted to, but that human seems to almost increase in speed over time, so he may be faster than me. Next was the kind human and another with a large tail. Before they ran, the kind human touched all of her clothes to make them lighter. The human with the tail made it in 4.49 seconds, while the kind one did it in 7.15 seconds. That human's tail is nice, but mine is better. Next up was the pink human that smelled of acid and the human with a laser in his stomach. Everyone, you're not being creative of enough. Robot. On your mark. I'll show you what it's like. 
to be allowed to use your quirk. He jumped up and used his later to shoot himself backwards towards the finish, although he fell down a second after firing it, having to get back up and shoot once more. But the pink human already crossed the finish line before he could shoot himself once more. His time ended up being 5.51 seconds. If I shoot more than a second, I get a stomach stomach ache. My king and the explosion human were next, and the Zuku seemed nervous. I walked up beside him and gave him another encouraging talk. Wyan, let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshines and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. You've got this, Suzuku. He seemed to be determined now as I moved to the side to allow him to run. Robot. On your mark, get ready. Katsuki. Explosive speed. He, <laughs> he created a huge explosion in his hands, propelling him forwards at great speeds. While Izuku used his good old muscle legs, <laughs> muscle legs to get in the other side. I'm sorry. 4.13 seconds. Robot, excuse me, 4.13 seconds. I cheered on Izuku while he ran, wanting to give him more moral support. He made it over to the other side three seconds later. Robot. 7.02 seconds. Not too bad. Definitely good for someone that didn't use a quirk. Izuku was at the end of the track, hands on his knees, panting. I was going to go back to where the other humans are, but before I could, the teacher spoke to me. Aizawa, oi, you still have to run as well. You may be a pet, but you're technically a student, so I need you to participate as well. Does this human think he can order me around? <laughs> I just sat down, staring at him with defiance, clear in my reptilian-like eyes. He just glared at me and looked like he was about to speak again when I smelled a delicious scent and heard my king speak. Izuku, why and over here? You can have this nice treat if you run the track as fast as you can. I perked up when he said treat as I walked over to the start of the track. Robot, on your mark, get ready. The moment I heard the bang, I was already on the other side next to Izuku waiting for the treat. All the humans were shocked as the robot read my speed. Robot. 0.001 seconds. Oh, what? Since Izuku was still in shock, I just ate the treat out of his hand carefully, not to bite his hand off. That seemed to snap him out of his shock as he began to rub my hair. Izuku, nice, wow, nice job, Yan. Keep praising me. It makes me feel more powerful than I already am. Test two, grip strength. I was behind Izuku, looking over his head at this device as he closed his eyes, concentrating. He then squeezed with all his might, and the machine read 56.0. What? Not bad, Izuku. What? Izuku, what do you mean not bad? That was a terrible score to compare to everyone else. Why? Well, at least your grip is stronger than a newborn baby's. Izuku, thank you? Wow, four, 540 kilom kilograms? What are you, a gorilla or an octopus? Octopuses are sexy. Is he attracted to the octopuses? His scent is weird, and for some reason, it makes me hate him. Izuku, well, your turn, Ryan. I nodded before gripping the machine, causing it to break under my power. Izuku, what? Ryan, I'm able to tear ships apart with my bare hands, so this is nothing. Izuku, what species are you? Ryan. The greatest predator in the universe. He just looked at me confused before shrugging it off thinking I'm just boasting. Test 3. Standing long jump. While everyone made some great distance, Izuku didn't get too far. He got pretty far in my opinion. Regardless, he got up and moved to the other end of the sandbox before waving a treat in the air for me. I crouched down using my tail to spring myself high into the air, clearing the sandbox and a couple of meters. I ran back to Izuku quickly to get my treat and some praise. <laughs> Test four. <laughs> Repeated sidesteps. The weird smelling grape head used purple balls to bounce himself back and forth to get a nice score. I went next, seeing as my king stayed frozen in place. Using my speed and leg muscles, I moved so fast I began to blur in their vision. 
Test five, ball throw. The kind human threw the ball into the air and it kept rising, 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 rising. Even with my superior vision, I could hardly see the ball anymore as I was certain it left the earth. As I was shouted the score, revealing it to be infinity, all infinity. That's amazing. She got infinity. Next was Izuku and he looked more nervous than ever. All I was... As I was going to cheer him on, Ida spoke. Man, I'm telling you right now, like, <laughs> this is like, I remember this scene, and I was like, damn. Well, I mean, he's not wrong, but damn, like, damn. <laughs> so, anyways, anywho, um, Tenya, it doesn't look good for Midori if he continues like this. Katsuki, huh? Of course not. He's a quirkless small fry, you know. I hissed at him in warning, not allowing him to insult Zuku again. Uraka rubbed my head in an attempt to calm me down, which surprisingly worked. Tenya Corkless, are you not aware of what he did in the entrance exam? Katsuki, huh? Izuku looked about ready to throw the ball, as he did with a fire in his eyes, and probably his stomach too. But before he released it, I noticed the teacher's eyes glow red. When he released, there was no power behind it, and it only went 46 meters. Izuku, I was definitely trying to use it now. Arizawa, I erased your quirk. That entrance exam was definitely not rational enough. Even a kid like you was accepted. Those insults to Izuku began to enrage me as I let out a low hiss. <laughs> Izuku, you erased my quirk? Those goggles. I see! You can erase other people's quirks with your quirk just by looking at them. The eraser. Here, a eraser head. In my growing rage, I didn't notice the rest of the class huddled together. Eraser? I don't know him. I've never heard of I've heard of him. He's an underground hero. I then smelled a familiar scent that was that was similar to All Might. As out from what I can tell, you can't control your quirk, can you? Do you intend to become incapacitated again and have YN save you? Azuku, that's not my intention. He then wrapped Azuku in his scarf and pulled him closer. That was the final straw. He attacked first. <laughs> Bruh. <sighs> Lord, baby Jesus, don't let him do anything stupid. <laughs> For real. That was the final straw. He attacked first, so this is totally justified. At least in my eyes. As I focused on calming myself, at least long enough for him to release Izuku. Several agonizing minutes went by as I kept myself from running over there and clawing his eyes out. Until I really finally released him. Seeing my chance, I let out a loud roar. Oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> this is, I'm sorry, I just, <laughs> I let a loud roar before running over at Azawa with blinding speed. He used his scarf to try and grab me, but I evaded every single attempt until I got close enough to strike. I grabbed his neck and was about to rip his throat out until Azuka ordered me to stop. YN, no. I immediately stopped and slowly released the pro hero from my deadly grip as he quickly wrapped the scarf around me. Now this is getting personal, so I cut off a piece of the scarf with my razor sharp claws effectively releasing me this shocked him as azuku grabbed my lish ensuring me i didn't try and kill azuku aizawa how his scarf isn't just an ordinary scarf is it i feel the material and there's something in there it's not nearly as strong as the humans or yacha's ships or and even when i cut through them even and even then i cut through them like butter Izuku, I'm so sorry. I promise it won't happen again. He just looked between an apologetic Izuku and a glaring pet before sighing. As I was fine. I should have seen that coming from his protecting this over you. Just throw the ball and remember what I told you. Got his ass uh, checked. Put back in his lane. That's kind of funny. Izuku nodded as he gave me a treat and told me to apologize to Aizawa, which I reluctantly obeyed. It's a fake one. Don't worry. I fake apologized. <laughs> we fake apologized. While Zuku went back to the circle, I went over to Aizawa, finishing off the treat while staring at him. I slowly sat near his feet, watching Az watching Azuku with him. Wyan, I'm sorry for almost killing you. He looked surprised before putting eye drops in his eyes. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if you could fly. I can't fly, at least. I don't think I can. Aizawa, anyways, I'm, so I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't have acted aggressively towards Midoriya, but he needs to see the reality of his actions. Wyan, you're right on that, but maybe do it a little more nicely. As I was sure. Here. I saw Midoriya gave you these to calm you down. 
He handed me two of the cat-shaped snacks, which I quickly took and began to avow- devour. <laughs> I felt him slowly rub my head, making me purr. I could hear him let out a low chuckle before whispering. As I was, she was right. You are really like an overgrown cat, protective of his owner. I looked up in time to see Azuku throw the ball with his finger glowing, a g- getting a great distance. I looked to my right to see a score which was f- 705.3. His finger was broken badly, but he kept a smile on his face as he turned to us. Azuku, Azuku, Mr. Aizawa, I can still move. A smile now is now on his face. Aizawa, this kid. I then noticed a familiar scent was getting close, was closer, and I saw All Might coming out from behind his hiding place. He looked at Azuku before giving me a thumbs up and throwing me a quick snack. I quickly caught it and ate it as... All Might went back to his hiding spot as I turned back to Azuku. You did it, Azuku. You can control your quirk slightly more now. We'll grow, <clears throat> we'll grow stronger together, just like my siblings became and pre- Praetorians while I became a Ravenger. Except this time, you will live to see your dream too. Hopefully the Yaucha don't find this planet before then. Is that a foreshadowing? That will never be fully thing because... You're not continuing the story anymore. <sighs> Chapter 8 Rage, you damn nerd. YN POV. As I was going over to congratulate Izuku, I sensed anger and malice intent. The source of this hostility was radiating off the explosion human. His eyes had an emotion that was that said that he was ready to kill. An emotion I'm very familiar with. That immediately put me into defense mode, so I ran in in front of Izuku in case the explosion human attacked. Katsuki, hey! I was right. He began to run at us while making explosions in his hands. Katsuki, tell me what's going on, duck you damn... <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> duck you bastard. Izuku head behind me, terrified as he was getting closer. I was about to skewer his leg with my tail, but Az- Aizawa used his scarf to restrain the human bomb. Katsuki, what the? These clothes are hard. I I saw they're weapons for capture made of carbon fiber woven together with metal wire made of a special alloy. Jeez. Don't keep making me use my quirk over and over. I have dry eye. He released that explosion human, the explosion human before his scarf, before his scarf wrapped back around his neck. I saw we're wasting time. Whoever's next, get ready. That would be me. But first, I need to escort Izuku back to the other humans. I wrap my tail around Izuku's uninjured hand as I begin to lead him over to the other humans. On my way, the human bomb glared at me, so I kindly returned the gesture. Before we got too far away, I spoke to him. Wyan, you should thank your teacher, Kachan. After all, he unfortunately saved your leg from being amputated. He flinched at that before his gaze intensified, amusing me. We made it back to the others where I placed Izuku next to the kind human since I trust her the most. Aizawa, hurry up, Wayan. We still have more things to do. I'm really hissed at his order for me to increase my speed. But regardless, I went back to the circle where he handed me a ball. I have enough strength to rival my mother, especially when I'm enraged. So this should be nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> With that encouraging thought, I launched the ball straight into the air, causing a slight shockwave to form. The ball kept soaring higher and higher as it looked to be gaining speed. But just just with the kind human's ha- ball, excuse me, kind human's ball, it went so high you couldn't see it anymore. Aizawa walked over to me before handing me another cat-shaped snack, which I promptly devoured. Aizawa, you know by this point I wouldn't be surprised if you could speak. Wyatt, but I can. It just really hurts my throat when I do. I saw, like I said, I'm not surprised. Anyway, you got infinity as well, so come on, there's m- much more things to do. After we began to do various, after that we began to do various tasks, wi- tasks which Izuku seemed to struggle with. He collapsed on the ground, panting and covered in sweat, as the others walked past him. I wiped his sweat away while covering him in an unforgive from the unforgiving rays of the sun a few minutes later he was all right and just in time too as aizawa had us all lined up aizawa okay i'll quickly tell you the results 
The total is simply the marks you got from each test. It's a waste of time to explain verbally, so I'll just show you the results all at once. Izuku was trembling, so I tried to comfort him, but even, but even I felt dread if he was terminated. He pressed something which allowed me to, which, excuse me, he pressed something which showed the results, and I was immediately filled with dread. Izuku was in, la in last place, but that would make it, what, what, what made it worse was that I was first. Not only did I fail to make sure Izuku didn't get last place, but I excelled securing his fate. Before Izuku could look, I covered his eyes so he wouldn't see my failure. <laughs> I was like, this is my failure. He gently moved his hands away as I saw fear fill Filled, fill his eyes as he went down the list until you finally landed on his name, which was in last, and it looked like all hope in his eyes were gone. Aizawa, by the way, I was lying about I was lying about the expulsion. Everyone froze and stared at him with wide eyes as a smile grew on his face. Aizawa, it was a rational deception to draw out the upper limits of your quirks. A what? A human fem human to our right then spoke. Of course that was a lie. It would have been obvious if you just thought it through. I should consume her I should consume her brain for the knowledge stored within. And I'll get her whatever power <laughs> I'll get whatever her power is, so it's a win win for me. But maybe not for her. It seemed as Zuku knew my intention as he tugged on my leash before I could move toward her. <laughs> what was really about to be like? Mm, this is a I should eat her brain good idea <laughs> Aizawa with that we're done here there are hand there are handouts with the curriculum and such in the classroom so when you get back look over them my king let out a sigh of relief before Aizawa handed him a piece of paper Aizawa Midoriya have the old lady fix you in the nurse's office tomorrow we'll be packed with even more rigorous tests prepare yourself I might need to kill someone with a healing power to assist, assist Azuku. But he doesn't want me to kill innocent people or any people for that matter. I'll just have to go out hunting when he's busy slumbering. <laughs> Period. While we were working out of school, I gave Azuku a piggyback ride since he was exhausted. Azuku, so tired. When? Once we get home, I'll make you a nice cold beverage and give you a nice relaxing massage. How does that sound? Izuku, that sounds nice. Thanks, Wyan. You're the best. Wyan, I... A hand being firmly placed on my shoulder causes me to, to cut myself off. Not wasting a second, I grab the arm of the human and flip them over us so I could deliver the killing blow. But before I could slice their face apart, Izuku grabbed my arm. Izuku, wait, Wyan, it's just Ida. I inspected the dazed human, and when I saw the glasses and blue hair, I recognized him. I picked him up with one hand as the other was holding Izuku up. When? Sorry, human. I thought you were an attacker. He readjusted his glasses and fixed his hair before speaking. It's all right. I should have announced my presence. I approached to see if Midori's fingers healed. Izuku, yeah. Thanks to recovery, girl. Flashback. When POV. We were in the nurse's office as Azuku was screaming while the old lady human kissed his finger. I was lying down on a nearby bed watching all of this unfold. And just like last time, his finger turned back to normal as he finally stopped screaming. Azuku, wow, it's healed. But I suddenly feel very tired. Recovery girl. My quirk can only stimulate a person's healing ability. Healing requires stamina. If you keep getting major injuries, you'll have you'll. You'll use too much stamina and end up dying instead, so be careful. Dying? I'll need to increase my surveillance on Izuku to ensure his survival. <laughs> Izuku, I'll end up dying instead? <laughs> Flashback end. We were now walking with Ida as he had a conversation with Izuku. Tenya, I was really taken about by Mr. Izawa. I even thought, this is the best of the best and such. I didn't even think a teacher would encourage us with a lie. A voice then yelled out from behind us, and I already recognized her just from her from her voice. Hey, you three, going to the station? Wait for me. Are we going to the station? I always just run back home, straight back home while carrying Izuku. But I guess this is a good opportunity for him to make some allies. Izuku Uraka? Tenya, you're the Infinity Girl. O Ochako, 
I'm a chakuraka. And <laughs> I said her name so weirdly. I'm sorry, guys. Um, you're Tenet, Tenya Ida, and you're YN, and you're Deku Midoriya, right? On instinct, I growled, which scared Ida, but Izuku was just as shocked, was just shocked, and Araka didn't seem to notice. Izuku, Deku? I chuckle, huh? But during the fitness test, the boy named Bakugo said, Deku, you bastard, right? To calm, Azu to calm me down, Izuku rubbed my hair, which caused me to purr. Um... Izuku, um, my real name is Izuku, but Deku is just what Kachan calls me to make fun of me. Tenya, an insult? Ochako, oh, is that right? I'm, I'm sorry, but Deku sounds like the Japanese word for you can do it, so I kind of like it. Izuku, I'm Deku. Tenya Midoriya, you're accepting it too easily. Wasn't that an insult? Izuku just hit his face in my oversized sweater. YN. You just accepted that. You accepted that rather quick, Izuku. Or shall I address you as Deku from now on? He lifted his head up, which was still beat red, and whispered in my ear. Izuku, it's fine, Wayan. You can keep calling me Izuku. I just nodded before continuing our walk to the station instead. All the while, Izuku is speaking with the other two now allies, while occasionally conversing with me. <coughs> we finally made it to the station with a still exhausted Izuku on my back. The other two humans were nice, so I'll consider them allies. For now, at least. I place Izuku on the couch before taking off his shoes so he can lay on the couch properly. With my king now comfortable, I went into the kitchen to prepare the nice cool drink just like how Inko taught me to. Once I had all the ingredients, I quickly ran upstairs and got Izuku some clean, comfortable clothes. While I was making the iced tea, I would occasionally go and check on Izuku. He seemed to be relaxing, watching TV while wearing his All Might pajamas. The iced tea was now ready, so I grabbed some snacks to go along with his drink. When I entered the room, Izuku immediately thanked me for everything I was doing. Izuku, not that I don't appreciate you for what you're doing for me, YN, but why? I handed him his iced tea before setting down, setting down his snacks on the table. YN, you seemed more stressed than usual from the day you had. So I decided to alleviate some of the stress to help. He took a sip of the iced tea and let out a sigh of satisfaction once done. Izuku, it tastes really good, Wyan. You almost replicated it perfectly. Wyan, I could never replicate the perfection of that of your mother's. I can't perfect perfection. He chuckled before he looked like he wanted before he looked like he wanted to say something. I crouched down to look up at his face before questioning him. When? What is it, Izuku? Izuku, aren't you going to tell me about your family? When? Sure. There's my mother. My mother. My mother. <laughs> my mother. <laughs> Why did I say that? When? Sure. There's my mother and hundreds of my siblings, both born and unborn. What do you want to know? Izuku, well, what happened to them? When he said that, a quick flashback of the Yacha killing my siblings and taking my mother flashed before my eyes. That memory caused me to let out a growl and my pupils to dilate, which to surprised Izuku. I guess he thought I was angry at him as he began to rapidly apologize while shaking. Izuku, I'm, I'm so sorry, Wyan. I don't want to pry into your personal life any. I won't. I won't pry into your personal life anymore. I cut him off with a hug, trying to calm his nerves. Wyan, it's fine. I just got a quick flashback of something terrible. My home was attacked by predators, and they killed every single one of my siblings while taking my mother. Izuku immediately hugged me while rubbing my hair. Izuku, I'm so sorry that happened to you, Wyan. I began to slowly calm down before grabbing one of the snacks I brought for Izuku. Wyan, what is done is done. All I can do is move on. I munched on a snack as Izuku looked in deep thought. He then let out a small gasp before struggling to say a sentence. Izuku, don't don't you want to leave and find your mother? Do I? She is my mother and queen, so I'll always remain loyal to her. But I have no I, I have no way to find or get to her, and she has yet to speak with me after all these years. Even if did she even if she did order me back, I think I want to stay here with Izuku, my new king. Why no? I am loyal to you now. You're my new king, and I won't lose you or Inko like I did my old family. I won't abandon you, even if my mother's order even if my mother orders me to. As long as you want me, that is. 
Izuku had so much joy on his face, I think he I thought he would explode. But instead, he hugged me, which I gladly returned. I placed his iced tea on the small table before laying us both on the couch while grabbing the remote with my tail. I turned on the TV and handed Izuku the remote while I acted like a blanket for him. <clears throat> I promise you, Izuku, I'll protect you no matter what, even if it costs me my life to ensure yours. It's just so sad, but so cute. I opened my eyes to see the room shrouded in darkness and Izuku sleeping while holding my tail. The clock on the wall read 12. At least, that's what I think it read. It's hunting time. Have sweet dreams, Izuku. I'll be back later. I slowly removed my tail from his surprisingly iron grip, but he began to immediately shiver and shake. It looked like he was about to wake up, so I quickly placed a pillow where I was laying it on his hands. <laughs> he stopped before turning his body to face the couch as he continued his slumber in peace. Wasting no time, I quickly ran out of the house and onto the roof in search of any humans with powers for me to take. After a while searching, I smelled two humans nearby with a trace of smoke coming from an alleyway. I hopped on the roof above the alleyway to observe my potential prey. One human was smoking a cigarette, while the other was using something I couldn't see. So, what are our orders after this? That's what I'm, try I'm trying to find out, but no one's answering. The human that answered his ally turned around and showed he was holding a phone, so he will be the first to go. I jumped down on, the top, on top of the human, pinning him down as I attempted to get the take a chunk out of his brain but his ally act reacted immediately and distracted me by breaking a weak wood bat over my head the human beneath me tried to get up but i held him down with relative ease as the other human as as for the other human i began to strangle him with my tail while the other human tried miserably to remove my tail i went back to the human beneath me please please don't kill us we i immediately gave him a head bite not wanting to hear his begging but I noticed his voice sounded different that time. As his body felt limp, I turned to the human being hanged by my, from my tail. Whose struggles began to lessen with each passing second. I dropped him in front of me and just stared at him. What do you want from me, monster? Your brain, human. He began to tear up as he got on his hands and knees, disgusting me. Please spare me. You already killed my partner. Just let me go. Is that desperation? Creatures staring death in the eyes will do anything to survive. Anything. Ryan, I could use some information on you and your allies' quirks and the people you're working for. So he slowly looked up at me with a small hope in his eyes. And anything you want to know, I'll tell you. I have a healing quirk that takes any and all wounds off anyone, no matter how major they are, when I place my hand on their heart. But the wounds get inflicted on me instead. My partner had a quirk called Mimic. It allowed him to sound like anyone he heard before. As for my bosses, who do you want to know about? This human has a healing quirk, so my hunting has come to a quick end. But these humans have more than one leader. The memories of the other human didn't kick in just yet, so I'll have to eat his brain and wait. I grabbed his head as he began to plead for mercy once more. Bringing my, his head up, I shot my tongue through his skull and into his brain, taking a piece into my mouth on the way out. Finally, the memories flashed through my brain, and I thought I, was, I would see the same human wearing a suit. But I saw several humans, two in particular that stood out to me. One had hands all over his body, while the other seemed to be made of black sm dark smoke. Strange. There must be other villains out there that have minions, but I can't dwell on this right now. I need to get back to Izuku. I quickly spewed acid on the bodies before running all the way back up to Izuku's home. I opened the door just to see Izuku still sleeping on the couch with the pillow I gave him. I gave him hugged close. I closed the door before walking over to Izuku and laying back down next to him like nothing happened. We were all now in English class, I believe. The loud human wrote down four sentences of strange symbols I couldn't read. I was sitting next to Izuku with a pencil and a piece of paper which had various drawings of me and my siblings on my desk. President Mick, which of these English sentences is wrong? Nobody answered, and I was busily, busy doodling me and Izuku burning several planets. 
President Mick, everybody, heads up. Let's get this party started. Wyatt, stop doodling and pay attention. I merely hissed at him before going back to drawing. While I was drawing, the female human behind me raised her hand. President Mick, okay, Yairozu, come on. We were now in the kingdom of food and snacks. I was laying on the floor next to Zuku while he sat with Ida and Ochaka. Or Chaco. A creature I believed to be human came up to us, and I let out a low hiss while Azuku was in awe. Lunch rush. White rice is a great comfort food, isn't it? The kind human gave a slight nod while I continued to stare at the human down. Oh, Chaco. Yeah. The human then took a bag out that had a delicious smell radiating off of it. Lunch rush. And this is for your pet. Does he know any tricks? How dare he assume me as a mindless pet to be ordered around? Izuku, Wyan, could you do a quick trick for lunch rush? As you command. I used my tail as a pogo stick while I began to bounce around. The humans in the area clapped for me as well as the hero and Izuku. I stopped bouncing and I stared at the pro hero waiting for my snack. He tossed one tree in the air, which I promptly devoured once I caught it. The great taste almost made me shed a tear, but I remained strong. <laughs> We were now in the final class, which was hero basic training. I was laying my head on Izuku's lap while he rubbed my messy hair. On my I am my king immediately perked up, patted, <laughs> perked up, it patted my shoulder, signaling me, signaling me the beginning of class. On my coming through the door like a normal person. Oh, whoopsie, sorry guys. <laughs> Such a normal entrance by a normal person. All the humans were in awe of the legendary number one hero before them. But I had more urgent matters, like taking a nap beside Azuku. He was now in front of the whole class, still looking powerful. All Might, I teach, I teach hero basic training. It is a subject where you train in different ways to learn the basics of becoming a hero. You'll take the most units of the subject. Let's get right into it. This is what we'll do today. Combat training. Katsuki combat? Is it training? All oh Might. And to go with that are these. Costumes based on your quirk reg registrations and requests you sent in before the school started. Zuku costumes. All oh Might. After you change, gather in the ground. Be be better. Oh, yes, sir. Y'all yeah, do remember Zuku's like old costume. <laughs> so cute, but like. That's a little too much. Just a little too much, honey. But good for inspiration. <clears throat> Anyways. It took a while for Izuku to put on his hero costume, so I waited until he was ready. When he finally came out of the locker room, we were already far behind the other humans. His costume even came with a belt made on to hold on to me while we traveled at high speeds. So, I could now use my tail in combat whenever I do carry him with his costume on. Like, now the belt wrapped nicely around me as I ran the test into the testing ground carrying Izuku. Achako. Oh, Deku? Izuku, Uraka! I could feel and hear my king's heart quicken when he gazed at Uraka. Achako, that looks cool! Really down to earth. Wayne, do you not have a hero costume? I don't need one. It would just hinder my abilities. Ochako, I should have written what I wanted. My m mind might ended up being a mine ended up being a skin tight bodysuit. It's embarrassing. How are you meant to avoid attacks in that? <laughs> See? Thank you. The hero course is the best. The human to my left looked to be in what all humans call a diaper. <laughs> oh my. Now it's time for combat training. Tinya, sir, this is a battle center form from the previous exam. So will we be conducting urban a battle, urban ba battles again? Oh my, no. We're going to move ahead two steps. Most of the time, fighting villains takes place outside. But if you look at the total numbers, atrocious villains appear indoors at a higher rate. Imprisonment, house arrest, backroom deals. In this society, filled with heroes, truly intelligent villains hide in the shadows. Any smart creature will know how to hide and strike in the shadows. Will know to hide and strike in the shadows. All oh might. For this class, you'll be split into villains and heroes and fight on two-on-two -on -two indoor battles. 
without basic training? The instincts to fight and flee should be natural. Besides, it's better to go in blind to get the full experience. Oh my, this is a real battle to understand those basic to to understanding those basics. However, the key this time is that there is no robot you can just beat up. Momo, who 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 will how will wins and losses be determined? Katsuki, can we beat them up anyway? Ochako, will the punishment be expulsion like like with Mr. Aizawa? Tenya, how shall we be split up? Isn't this cape crazy? Am I allowed to kill he the humans since this is a real battle? Oh my, I'll answer all your questions. And no, Wayan, you can't. Now, listen here. The situation is that the villains have hidden a nuclear weapon somewhere in their hideout. The heroes are trying to dispose of that. The heroes need to catch the villains or get n the nuclear weapon back into the allotted time. The villains need to protect the nuclear weapon for the whole time or catch the heroes he then took out a small yellow box with the word lots written on all oh my teams and opponents will be determined by drawing lots tenya they're being decided so haphazardly izuku pros often have to create makeshift teams with heroes from other agencies so maybe that's why tenya i see the discernment to look ahead Please excuse my rudeness. All right, it's fine. Let's do this quickly. Everyone began was quickly sorted into teams, but I wasn't with Azuku. I was by myself. I began to let out a low hiss to do my grow to due to my growing agitation. Wyan, excuse me, <laughs> Azuku. It's all right, Wyan. I'll only be gone for a little while. All right, Wyan. Will it make you feel better if I let you battle against a team of your choosing? I only gave a slow nod, showing my confirmation as my hissing died down. Oh my. The first team to fight will be these guys. The two letters were D and A, which Izuku, which was Izuku and Ochako versus Kachan and Tenya. My growling came back as I saw the explosion humans smirk at me. <laughs> I would have killed this kid a long time ago. I ain't gonna lie. For real. Sorry to all the Katsuki lovers, but it's the truth. I must say the truth. Anyways, for me, my truth. Anyways, all my team A will be the heroes and team D will be the villains. Everyone else head toward the monitor room. Oh, yes, sir. All my had to pick me up and hold my leash as I wouldn't move from my spot, glaring at the explosion maker. Once he was sure I wouldn't rip Katsuki apart, he wrapped my leash around his hand before speaking to the other teams. Oh my, villain team, go in first and set up. In five minutes, the hero team will break in and the battle will start. Before we all left, All Might spoke with the villain team as Izuku made sure to calm me down. If this battle goes too far, I'll finish it. All Might then led me to the obser observation room where he tied my leash to his waist so I wouldn't go far. <laughs> he was like, uh-uh, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> All Might, now let's start the indoor person-to-person -person combat training with Team A and Team D. Okay, everyone, you should think as well. Also, keep Wyan distracted. He may run in there and interfere with the battle. A few minutes in, and Azuku dodged a surprise attack, saving Ochako as well. A surprise attack from the start. Bakugo, that's cheating. A surprise attack isn't manly at all. Wait until you find out what this man tried to tell Ozuku back in the back in there now. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways, as Katsuki was about to launch another explosion, Ozuku grabbed his arm and flipped him onto his back. I let a, a, a I let a smile stretch across my face as Ozuku was finally standing up to Katsuki. This is a fight I hoped and dreaded would come. And now it's finally here. I just hope you come out on top, my king. Seeing you hurt is making me is making the rage inside me grow, so I might not be able to control myself for too long. <laughs> Chapter 9. YN versus Kachan. YN POV. My leash was tied around all my hands so he could make sure I wouldn't run in there. He tried to feed me treats to get my mind off my king's battle, but I stayed motionless staring at the cameras. 
It seems that this will be a destructive battle, not just for the bo their bodies, but for the building too. And I'm not allowed to interfere. This will be Izuku's first battle without me. What was Bakugo saying? Can't tell with just the cameras in a fixed position and no sound. All Might just sighed as he put it, the tree he was trying to give me back in the bag. All Might. He's talking to his partner over the small wire, over the small wireless radio. You can bring that. You can bring that plus the, plus the door's floor plan, and this capture cape tape. He then pulled out some small, regular-looking tape. All Might. Once you wrap this around your opponent, it shows that you captured them. But what if your opponent can break out of it? What would happen then? The time limit is 15 minutes, and the heroes don't know where the nuclear weapon is located, right? All Might, yes! The heroes are clearly at a disadvantage here. Not every battle will be in your favor, but regardless, you still fight. All Might, heroes should be able to turn the tables on whatever predicament they're in. Besides, didn't Mr. Aizawa tell you to? You know, here we go. Oh, uh, plus ultra. Monsieur Bakugo is. Everyone turned back to the, on the to the cameras to see Azuku block an explosion, propelled propelled kick after he ordered a Chaco to leave. He Azuku wrapped the tape around the explosion human's leg, which reminded me of when Azuku did Aizawa did it. He then avoided another explosion, like he knew it was coming. That guy's amazing. He's not even using his quirk fighting against the guy who finished the first in the entrance exam. All those years of you studying heroes and your enemies have finally paid off. When the explosion, when the explosion maker placed his hands behind him, Izuku made a tactical retreat. They then did a quick chase of cat and mouse. But since my king is such an agile mouse, he managed to escape the explosive human's line of sight. I guess this made him angrier as he began to yell something out. He seems really angry. It's scary. My mother's wrath is a lot scarier than any opponent opponent I've ever faced. Right now, relatable. Right now, no fighting is happening, but I was getting agitated from being far from Azuku. I can see him on the screens, but that didn't still calm me down. Alma must have seen my agitated state as he crouched down to, to my level. All Might, why are you alright? Why are no? I've never been so far from Izuku for this long. He put on a thinking face as he scratched his chin before an idea struck him. He got up and faced the other humans before speaking to them. All Might, will any of you be willing to take Midoriya's pet? Why on a walk? Everyone glanced at each other nervously, not sure if they even wanted to be near me. The pink human raised her hand and All Might addressed her question. All Might, yes, Ashido? I can do it, but why does he need a walk? All Might, he is currently very ag agitated, so I believe a quick walk outside the surveillance room will help him. All right, then come on, Wyan. He gestured, she gestured over to the door, but I didn't move, although it was tempting to leave the room. Ashido didn't, didn't know what to do, so she looked at All Might for help. He took out a bag of snacks he had and shook them in in front of me bro I was like I need to be tempted the delicious smell hypnotized me as I stared at the snacks oh my see these delicious snacks my hand go get them he tossed it over to Ashido as he let go of my leash allowing me to run after the treats got it she caught the snacks which caused me to pounce on her to try and get the snacks stop get off I kept I kept trying to reach for the snacks as she tried to push me off I'll give you a snack if you get off of me after hearing that I got off her and sat beside her as she got up Geez, you're heavy. Anyway, here. The pink human tossed me one of the treats as she grabbed my leash and began to walk out the door. I just sat there and ate the delicious treat, and when I didn't move, she tried to tug me, but I didn't even budge. You know when you're strong enough to even attempt to pull me, human. At this point, she was pulling with all her might as I saw as I watched the cameras, but I was like, no, I'm not leaving. <laughs> Literally chuckling to myself at her attempts. Oh, I saw her struggling and my amusement from her futile attempts before telling her what to do. Ashido, you must ask Ryan to move politely. The only person that he allows to pull him is Midoriya. Oh, Ryan, can you move, please? See, human, you don't lead me. I lead you. <laughs> I got up taking a final glance at the screens before as I walked towards the door with my he within the human at my with the human at my side. 
I was surprisingly calm. It was surprisingly calming to be outside, but I felt weird without a Zuku. Wyatt, Mina. So, my name's Mina Ashido. Yours is YN, right? I didn't answer as she just had as she just had answered her own question. But this didn't deter her from continuing to speak. Mina, you're surprisingly heavy for something so small. Small? I'm as tall as all might. To prove my unspoken point, I stood up and, and I easily towered over her. She looked up at me, shocked that I was a lot taller than what I looked walking on all fours. Mina, never mind. Satisfied, I got back down and continued to, to lead the human around wherever I went. But the uneasy feeling came back and not long after the small human walk started. I let out small whimpers as I looked at the building that Zuku is supposed to be in. Ashido kept trying, began to pet my head in an attempt to calm me down. You know, hey, it's all right. Midori should be fine. He seems really strong. Her hand felt soft on my head and it surprisingly calmed me down slightly as I leaned into her hand. I almost purred out, but an explosion interrupted my moment of comfort. Mina, what was that? I looked into the direction the explosion came from, and it originated from the building Izuku was fighting in. I let out a small growl, knowing the explosion human caused it, and most likely used it to hurt Izuku. I swear one of these days I'm going to kill that human for being such a nuisance, but I can't. Because if I do, whose life would I threaten? Mina, oh man, we need to, come on, we need to get back to the others. She then began to run back to the surveillance room, but we walked for a while, so we were pretty far. I quickly got caught up with her and wrapped my tail around her waist so, like I do with a Zuku. Mina, hey! She immediately wrapped her arms around my neck as I increased my speed drastically, and within seconds, we were back in the surveillance room. That Baka goes really crazy. He's going to kill him. No, he won't, because he knows the consequence of trying to kill my king. I looked back at, at Ashido, and she was dazed. But any human would from, would, from traveling 60 miles per hour in a few seconds, I gently laid her on the ground as some of the humans mo moved to check on her. Oh my, young Bakugo, next time you use that, I'll stop the fight, and your team will lose. To attack on such a large scale inside is inviting the destruction and the, of the stronghold you should be protecting. That is a foolish plan of both heroes and villains. You will lose a lot of points for it. What I saw next made me growl and hiss in agitation. Not in agitation, but in rage. The explosion human launched himself at Izuku, but at the last second, he propelled himself over him while the snow blinded his sight. He then shot an explosion at his back, which seemed to have hurt Izuku a lot. What? What was that just now? He doesn't look like the type to think. He's more, but he's more subtle than I expected. What do you mean? He changed his course in a blast that doubled as a smoke screen and then did it again immediately. Getting in a clean hit while fighting against Eternia, and nerdy, whatever, requires fine lateral adjustments to the power of the explosions. He's too talented. Too talented. Ugh. Katsuki slammed his gauntlet into Izuku's right arm before grabbing it and slamming him to the ground. My breathing began to increase as my natural instincts began to slowly come back. This is a lynching. He can capture him for this exercise by just wrapping the tape around him. Those are not the actions of a hero. I thought Midoriya was pretty amazing too, but in terms of combat power, Bakugo is definitely a ball of natural instincts. Izuku got up and ran to the other side of the cor corridor they're in. He's running away. That's not something a man should do, but he has no choice. But something strange. Why? By this point, my breathing was heavy as I began to growl louder and deeper. All my must have noticed my now aggressive state as he slowly reached toward my leash. But before he could grab it, I ran out of the room as I roared while running into the building as Zuku was battling it. <laughs> Bro, I was holding it all along, but he did pretty good how long he waited. Oh my, why didn't come back? I ignored his voice in favor of running faster to my king's location, hoping I would make it in time. Instead of going up the stairs of the building, I jumped through the hole created from the blast. I landed perfectly inside just in time to see them running at each other as they charged their attacks. Not good if their attacks collide can potentially kill them both. If my king diverts his attack, Katsuki will live, but then he'll certainly receive severe burns. I guess I'm going to have to take the hit for him. This is going to hurt badly. 
With that thought, I ran in between them at the last second as I hugged Izuku's body close to me. That's when the searing hot pain of fire and explosion made contact with my back. I felt the ch chitin of my back fall off as some cracked but remained attached. The pain soon became all too intense that I screamed, slightly shaking the damaged building. As the dust began to clear, Ida's voice echoed from above. Tenure the weapon! I fell on one knee as I was weakened, but I felt the chitin on my back be fixed and replaced, this time stronger than last. At least I know that my that regen that regen the the regenerating power I took works. I didn't think Katsuki could even break through my armored skin, but I shouldn't be surprised if he was wearing his hero costume so it enhanced his explosions. Izuku Yen? I look up to Izuku only to see him fall forward, so I quickly caught him. My breathing and anger began to increase as I scanned his body. Turns out, even though I took most of the damage, some of it managed to still hurt Izuku, so now he was unconscious. I tried to shake him awake, but he didn't move. A few flashbacks of my dead family appeared as I looked. This is so sad. Uh, as I looked at Izuku's emotion motionless body. When I turned my head to Katsuki, he was replaced with a Yaucha, which made me growl even louder. Oh my, hero team wins. Come on, Mayan, don't let your rage control you. Relax long enough to help Azuku. I took in deep breaths to try and suppress my boiling wrath from exploding. Once I was calm enough, I gently placed my hand over where Azuku's heart is as I closed my eyes. I immediately felt my right arm break as searing pain uh, spread across my back and left arm. But I didn't scream as the pain and wounds quickly went away now thanks to my regenerative power. I opened my eyes to see Azuku now fully healed but still unconscious. The pain wasn't as bad the second time, but I guess my body grew slightly stronger after repairing itself. But Izuku is still not awake. Two robots then appear as they came over to us with a stretcher. I was about to attack them until All Might grabbed my collar, before gently pulling me away from the two machines. All Might, it's alright, Wayan. Those robots are going to take Midori to the nurse's office. I tried to hold in my anger as I saw them take him away from me. By this point, All Might had to let go of my collar and now was talking to Katsuki. Whether you, oh my, whether you win or lose, looking back and learning from your experiences is a part of life. Oh, Wyatt, oh my, wait. He started, he stopped talking to Katsuki and turned back to me. Oh my, yes, Wyatt? Wyatt, I knew who I wished to battle against. Oh my, who? I want to fight Bakugo alone. He was taken aback by either, by either me wanting to fight alone or because I said Bakugo was the malice. But he quickly composed himself before speaking once more. Oh my, you can't fight alone. You need a partner and so does Bakugo. Why? Give me the human bomb a par give the human bomb a partner, but not me. I'll end up hurting or killing the unfortunate human. He just sighed before accepting my conditions. All my all right, but I first need to find another building for your training. I didn't answer as I stared at Bakugo with a fury rage in my eyes. Nah, bro, I would have been like, you are a dumbass, bro. Pathetic as hell, because you're risking fighting somebody that you think is trying to surpass you. And risking literally, like, it could have been real. Like, it could have been real. You could be risking your part, your, like, your friend's life. You could be risking anybody's life. But your idiocy isn't letting you see that. I'm like, this man. This man is just. Oh, he pisses me off. <laughs> he pisses me off. That's why I stopped watching. <laughs> Bitch me. But honestly, though, I loved it at first. But then it, I didn't like it later on. But I still do read fan fictions. Best believe, because there are definitely, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, my take on it is the fan fictions are better than the actual anime itself. Um, most of them are. Some of them are questionable, but the ones I read, bro, ah, they're fresh. They're so good. I just have to read it over and over and over and over and over again. Anyways. All right. All right, Wayne. Go into the building while Bakugo and Ida enter five minutes later. I walked inside while giving a final glare at Katsuki before sending an apologetic smile to Ida for what I'm about to do. But before I left, I grabbed the paper that had the building layout. The bomb was on the third floor, and it turns out there were only two ways to enter the room it's in. 
The building had a strange design consisting of numerous hallways with some ventilation. There was also some unfinished areas with debris or leftover materials scattered everywhere. I wanted to put flat of stairs and the same thing was on this floor as well. I walked up one more flight of stairs and I was now on the floor where the weapon is. It didn't take long to find a room it was in and upon entering, I saw there were even more vents in this room. This could work to my advantage. I just have a little bit of work to do before they arrived. I began to initiate the first part of my defense plan, which was me moving the debris and leftover building materials to block various hallways. This will slow them down and potentially slip, slip them up. I moved on the second step, which, which was splashing small amounts of acid on the roof and floor. The floor was now weak enough that if you put some force on it, you'll fall. With the roof weakened, as well as any, sh as any shake of the building will cause various sections to fall. Oh my, hero team, you now may enter. It seems I finished just in time. Well, let the hunt begin. I ripped the cover of the vent as I crawled through the in as I crawled through, intending to do this undetected. Either POV. All oh my Hero team, you now may enter. With that we entered the building. I was cautious of where YN could be, but Bakugo seemed to be still upset that we lost. We quickly found the stairs leading to the second floor. And we still haven't seen or heard YN yet. We have to be careful. YN seems to be the type to attack with quick but powerful strikes. His strength would be a problem, so we might have to attack from range. But he can run at high speeds, so he may quickly close. He may quickly close the distance. Katsuki, where are you? Come on, you overgrown lizard! Ida, quiet, Bakugo. You'll give away our position. He ignored me and provide and continued to provoke YN wherever he was. Katsuki, are you upset that I beat Deku so badly he passed out? It's not my fault he can't take a small punch. We didn't notice, but a faint growl came from above us. YN POV, I had to relax my anger if I wanted to succeed in this hunt, but he was making it very difficult to not run out there and skin him alive. I was currently in the vent above their position, silently stalking them. Tenya, we're going to run out of time to find the weapon or capture Ryan if we stay here. So can we, may we please keep moving? Katsugi, let's just hurry this up. They began to move down the hallway as I slowly followed above them. Even though, even with my weight and height, I moved virtually silent in the vents. They soon came across the first barrier of debris I made. Tenya, he made a, did he make a barrier? Katsuki, it's just made of broken debris and building materials. I can easily blast through this pile of junk. He foolishly stopped toward, stomped towards the barrier, which caused the floor beneath them <laughs> to slightly shift and crack. Ida must have noticed the weakened state of the floor as he tried to warn Katsuki, but it was too late. Te Tenya, wait, don't! Katsuki had already sent the explosion of the barrier, causing it to fall, but the explosion also caused the floor beneath them to give in and collapse. They fell down to the floor's floor as I tried to hold back my chuckles <laughs> from giving away my location. Once my chuckles were gone, I pulled the cover off and exited the vent. The smoke and dust from the explosion provided a nice smoke screen for me to move down to them undetected. It seems the explosion and the collapse of the floor was cut off m above cut off some po of the power to the first floor. It was dim, making some nice dark areas to blend in with. Katsuki was pinned under some debris as Ida was l on his back, seemingly dazed by the fall. Katsuki, damn overgrown lizard, get this stuff off of me. <clears throat> Katsuki, excuse me, Ida got up and shook his head to get rid of his dazed state while I was stealthily, move, uh, stealthily moved in the shadows. Tenya, give me a moment. He began to help Katsuki by moving one, some of the debris off him as I just sat in the dark corner and waited. After a few minutes of moving heavy debris, uh, heavy pieces of debris, Katsuki was now able to move out from underneath the debris. But when he tried to stretch his arms, he immediately stopped and hissed in pain. Katsuki, fuck, my sides hurt. Tenya, do you need medical attention? Katsuki, no, we don't have much time left. We need to get the damn weapon or capture the overgrown lizard. I picked up a small piece of debris and tossed it behind them. The small noise caused them to go on alert and look out to where the noise came from. I pulled my fist back slightly as I got ready to attack Ida, but before I did, I spoke with him. When 
I'm so sorry. So please forgive me, Ida. <laughs> Tanya, what? I didn't. Need, I didn't let him finish speaking as I launched it. So that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I can't imagine just someone hurting me and they're like, before I do this, I'm sorry. It hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> My goodness. I'm sorry. It makes me laugh so hard. I didn't let him finish speaking as I launched forward and slammed his head into the ground. I had to hold back significantly not to kill him on accident. Katsuki was shocked by my sudden appearance, allowing me to grab Ida and run into the darkness. Katsuki, get back here, you bastard. He ran back. He ran into the darkness after me. But what he didn't realize is that I activated my invisibility while I hid Ida behind a pile of broken material. I watched as he ran by us while with burning flames of fury in his eyes. I turned and walked it and walked to Ida's unconscious body while deactivating my invis invisibility. I carefully removed his helmet as I began to expect him. He was thankfully still breathing, but he may have a concussion from me slamming his head into concrete. I'm sorry, Ida, but you were unfortunately his ally, which makes you my enemy. But I should help you, shouldn't I? As Izuku always said to be a hero and help someone when they're in need. Are you in need of help? He didn't answer as the silence remained uninterrupted. I'll take that as a yes. But first, I need to capture you. I took the capture tape off his body and began to wrap his entire body while being careful of his head. A few seconds after I finished wrapping him up, I attached him to the ceiling. As I was but a hunt the explosion maker, I remembered I might have given him a concussion with my attack. So I placed my hand over his heart and closed my eyes as I felt a stinging pain in my head. But like last time, as quick as it came, it left. Tanya, what? I opened my eyes to see Eden now awake as he took in his surroundings. He then noticed he was wrapped up and hanging off the ceiling like a decoration. Tanya, did you capture me? I just gave a nod expecting him to yell at me or something, but instead he praised my abilities. Tanya, well done, Wyan. You truly know how to utilize the environment. I was a little shocked he praised his enemy, but I accepted the praise regardless. As a thank you, I reached into a pocket of my pants and took out a bag of treats I took from All Might. I placed a treat in his mouth as I ate a few before putting them back in my pocket. Ida was slowly eating the snack before swallowing it. Tanya, was that a cookie? It tasted pretty good. When, to me, it's a cookie and it does taste good, doesn't it? He gave me a confused look, but I placed his helmet back on as I climbed out the hole they fell through. As I was walking in such in this in, in search of Katsuki, Ida called out from down below. Tenya, thank you for the cookie. I just smiled as I happily as I walked happily down a few hallways following the scent Katsuki gives off. He reminds me so much of myself when I was younger. He was arrogant he has arrogance pride and a natural instinct for combat all traits i had when i was younger except the instinct for combat i still possess that my siblings would have had fun breaking his spirit his scent got stronger so i knew i was getting closer to him i then heard an explosion and something crumbled followed up by katsuki yelling katsuki where are you he needs to learn when to charge and head first and when it comes to moving silent silently like now for example i was below another vent so i jumped on the ceiling and ripped off the cover before slithering in silently i moved quickly through the ventilation system heading towards where his scent is at its strongest i was now above where he is at as i could hear him talk to himself katsuki where the hell did he go come out you worthless bastard and fight me like a man if I fought you like Azuku's life dep like depended on it, you would have been reduced to a nice red paste within seconds. Even if Azuku's life wasn't threatened, you'd still never beat me. But should I prove it to you? Sh <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but should I prove it to you? Shouldn't I? I slammed through the vent cover, landing behind Katsuki as I just stared at his back. The noise surprised him so so he swiftly turned around and shot an explosion at me. I was impressed with his reaction time, since most creatures would just turn and stare. Regardless, I dodged the explosion, still staring at him, not angry anymore, just slightly bored. 
He didn't like my bored expression as the fire in his eyes burned brighter. Katsuki, you damn bastard. He flew at me using an explosion to propel him. But I saw his fight with, Katsu with Izuku, so I know what he was about to do. And I was right, as he went above me, extending his arm out to shoot me. But I grabbed his arm and slammed him into the wall. The air was knocked out of his lungs, so I sat down and waited for him to recover. I wonder if Izuku's alright. Will he give me head pats if I go to see him after this? Or will he be disappointed I'm fighting Katsuki? Katsuki. Damn. <laughs> you die. <laughs> While I was thinking about different outcomes, Katsuki recovered and blasted me with an explosion. Katsuki. That should teach you to... He was cut off seeing how I was just sitting there seemingly unaffected by this, by the blank, point blank explosion. I noticed he was now all right, so I gently grabbed his still extended arm and slammed him into the opposite wall a bit harder. Once again, I knocked the air out of his lungs, but since the impact was stronger, I had a little more time to myself while he gasped for air. Whose birthday would it be today if my family was still alive? Would it be mine? No. My birthday isn't. My thoughts were interrupted by Katsuki attempting to explode my arm, but all I did was manage to slightly crack the chin chitin on my shoulder. I grabbed his arm again, but this time I slammed him on the door like he did with Izuku. I then repeated what he said to him with a smile on my face. When you're beneath me. I had a slight, <laughs> I had a slight coughing fit, but it was worth seeing him seething in rage. His rageful eyes reminded me of something my mother taught me. My mother said that anger is, on, is useful only at, to a certain point. After that... It becomes rage, and rage will make you careless. But if you can control that rage, you'll become an unstoppable foe. I still remember all of her lessons since birth. Period. Katsuki, I'll kill you. While I was reminiscing, Katsuki once again tried to hurt me. This went on long enough. Excuse me. This went on long enough, so I wrapped my tail around him and slammed him repeatedly into the floor and walls. I would have kept going if all my didn't interrupt me. All right, Wyan, that's enough. Time is up. Let him go. I complied, but before I did, I threw him into a wall, knocking him out. This didn't go unnoticed by All Might as he rebuked, rebuked me immediately. All Might, Wyan, that was unnecessary. What would Midoriya think if he saw that? Wyan, he be glad I didn't kill him. All Might, be glad I didn't kill him, period. Be, be glad I didn't kill him, All Might, because in combat, I would leave no trace of my enemies. He remained silent, so I took the earpiece out of my ear and crushed it as I made my way to Izuku. Third POV. Back on the first floor, Ida was still hanging off the ceiling, slowly spinning in circles. Tinya, hello? I'm still hanging here. <laughs> no, bro, that's freaking hilarious, bro. Period. Period. Period, period. I would read more chapters, but it is getting quite hefty how much I have to edit right now, guys. So, we're going to keep it to three chapters. We'll live and prevail, I hope. Um, so, that was a very entertaining... This has been very entertaining chapters. Um, it got a little sad, but then it got uppity and happy and, you know, vengeful again. Um, I'm just glad... Bakugo got a taste of his own medicine a little bit, you know, um, because he definitely did deserve it, uh, reasonably so, period, he, he really did deserve it, though, um, but to all the Katsuki Bakugo fans out there, yes, I know he's improved, I haven't watched the series in a hot minute, but I believe I was in season four, but I know he has improved, guys. Before y'all come yelling at me in the comments, I know he's freaking improved. But, I mean, it's kind of like Endeavor. Endeavor has done worse things, but just because he's doing good now doesn't mean it, it immediately people forgive him for what he's done in the past. It doesn't fix anything in the past. It just improves him as of now, and people don't have to suffer what he made other people go through in the past. Um... Honestly, I feel like, because I don't feel like he's ever properly given a, a actual apology to Izuku or any type of apology because, honestly, it is insanity. Like, personally, like, if my kid was getting beat up 
and I didn't know who it was, you bet your butt I'd be going to the school. I'd be trying to find, figure out who it is. I, this, this is some weird people shit. I would have been figuring out who's beating up my son. Because this is insanity. Anyways, I'm not trying to hate on Inko or his non-existent father. But, I mean, Jesus freaking Christ. Um, I, Katsuki's my least favorite character. I never liked him. Never will, probably. I'm glad he's improved, though. But I have a distaste more now. It's not so much hate. It's more distaste. But he's much better. So, I is very good. I'm glad. Um, anywho, uh, do y'all think, um, Katsuki's gonna eventually learn his lesson to fuck around, find out? Let me know in the comments down below. For me, no. He'll find out too dang late with another person that will actually end him. But we'll, we'll just have to see. I don't know. Um, sadly, the story, ha story hasn't continued, so I kind of know at the moment, but mm, I'm sorry. It's a little pity about it. Um, anywho, guys, I'm going to cut this short because I don't feel the best at the moment. Um, and I'm trying to get videos out to you guys, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a week. It's been a week, guys. Anyways, um, I hope you guys did the, enjoy this, though. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more amazing videos, guys. Please do it for me for my birthday, please. That would mean the world to me. Um, I will try and keep you guys updated as much as I can. And sadly, your girl's gotta go, guys. Bye and peace.